Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Katicha. Check this out, y'all. You know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. It's something that you've got to remember. The more they change, the more they stay the same. And the climate now in society is such that you really do have to pick a side. You have to. Either you stand for justice and equality, or you stand for oppression, inequality, and injustice. There's really no... There's, there's no lukewarm in this situation. If you're a white person and you're fine with police being killed, kill, I mean, killing uh, unarmed black men and women and children, and the first thing that may come out of your mouth when you hear something like that is, well, what did they have? Did they have a gun? Or what did they do? Did they? If that's the first response that you get, or, you know, well, why didn't they listen? And that's your first thought process, then you, my dear, are part of the problem, okay? And you fit into the category of oppression, injustice, and um, unjust, unequal. That's the side you fall on. Uh, and so it reminds me of, I've seen this story before, as I said, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Um, I grew up in a neighborhood where, like I said, it was pretty mixed. And I remember some of the racism that was blatant at that time, but it was just the end of it. But I remember in about 1967, 1966, right before the riots started here, um, and we, my brother, one of my brothers had was good friends with a white guy by the name of Kerry. Kerry's gone on now. God bless the dead. And my brother used to spend a night over his house, and he used to spend a night over our house. And Carrie was Carrie, and they lived there forever, okay? But we lived there before. Uh, again, this, you know, this neighborhood and this time that I'm talking about is really interesting because given the fact of where we are again today, is really incredible. So I guess I'm the baby boomer. I am a baby boomer. The last of the baby boomers. Uh, and what really, really kind of gets me is the fact that how limited, how limited um, our options are today, at least the way I see, in my opinion, than they were 40, 50 years ago. Again, before the race riot started, I remember Kerry and my brother were good friends, and they tried to get my brother to beat Kerry up. And he just couldn't do it. And then when the white, when Kerry, some of Kerry's white relatives would come over, I remember they would tell Kerry not to play with the nigger. And, uh, you know, to call my brother names or you know other people and Kerry wouldn't do it he it was just that it wasn't that way so this is my earliest experience in terms of white people on a personal level fast forward to 2018 where oh by the way when the riots did come in the we burned down our own neighborhoods. And, but before we did that, we had to write Soul Brother on our windows and stick it in the um, in the in the doorway or on the in the window so they could see it. Guess what? Carrie, he put down Soul Brother. They had it. They had Soul Brother on their windows as well. So, you know, and. It, from the people, for the people in the neighborhood, it was just nothing because, you know, again, Carrie, Carrie was Carrie. 
I'm flashing forward now, and I'm trying to expedite this story, so, I, you know, just give me a minute. I'm flash forward to today, because you got to pick a side for real today. And these relationships are challenged so much because the elite wants to save face, and the elite wants to keep dominating not just black people but they're going to eventually dominate everybody all of y'all that think that you are part of the league you want to find out that you're not but when i think about the first go around of the race riots because it's coming whether we want to believe that whether we think we can Ignore it by not talking about it or not seeing it. It's coming. I don't know what the end game is. And I don't even want to see the end game. But it is going to be an apocalypse. Willie Lynch said it. Um, all of the great knowers and scholars of ancient time knew it. I think even Hawkins. John Hawkins. God bless the dead who just passed away not too long ago. He said it. He couldn't see civilization continuing. You can't build a foundation on thievery, murder, lying, destruction, rape, mayhem, and expect the inhabitants of that nation to be healthy. So when you look at white people today, there is no way in the world they can when you see them calling the police on black people for barbecuing or selling water, these are our children, or wondering what a 12-year-old is doing riding in the park with a toy gun when their kids do it every day, but when black people do it, then it becomes a criminal offense, then you know you're dealing in a time where really, basically, I don't see any carries anymore. I see black, white people who are silent. And like Jay Elliott said, that means they're okay with what's going on with us as a group. Now, I can individually say, oh, I wasn't shot by a police or robbed by uh, a black or white man. But I can say my brother was killed by a police. My brother was killed by a white police who was off-duty, who was involved, let's just put it like this, in a lot of hmm, skeptical behavior. So he was dismissed from the force. Okay? So I, I, I'm saying this to say we are at a time now in our history that the end game is not going to be nice. You cannot keep oppression and oppressing people and think that you want to stay on top. White people, you only one-tenth of the population. The whole world is nine-tenths of black or black and brown. People are tired of your policies and oppression. It's, in my opinion, all over the diaspora. Although I focus on what's going on right here in the States because when you people that voted for the president that we have now, when, when you realize that he spoke to a certain uh, demographic in America that loves what's going on. They feel emboldened by what's, uh, what Donald Trump is doing, what he's saying. And it is that type of mindset that I've never really uh, had to deal with I did see the very end of Bull Connors, but I think um, I also dealt with uh, um, Harold Breyer here in Milwaukee. So Bull Connors had nothing on Harold Breyer. But I'm seeing that day being ushered right back in, and it's scary, folks. Because this is the end game. And you cannot sit back and act like you you don't see what's going on. That you don't see just madness on the planet showing itself, showing up. 
And you don't fix that by not speaking it. You speak, you fix it by exposing it, by uncovering it. So for all of you who want to remain silent, and I'm talking about the good white people that don't want to uh, have any comment. Now, I'm not expecting you to change the world, but I am saying that collectively you can. Because when you decide that injustice and, un and, and, and inequality is unjust, is unfair, then you'll have a better way of looking at the elite group that wants the marionette that wants to continue to play all of us. And unless you are willing to do that, guess what? I have to draw the line in the sand. Unlike 50 years ago, because this is a much more high-tech enemy and problem that we have today. Because now we're dealing with biological, chemical, all kinds of warfare with, you know, people um, on powder kegs. The last thing I need to be doing is being unsure if you like justice or if you like un injustice. That's the last thing I need to be worried about. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. Be back a little later in the mental house. Bye-bye.